So Nick Saban had to replace a bunch of coaches this year. What did he do, Greeny? He brought in Doug Marone, who got fired at Jacksonville as his offensive line coach. And what did he do for the offensive coordinator after Sarkeesian went to Texas? He hired Bill O'Brien, who was at the Texans last year. And, and uh, nobody else does this. Uh, you know, maybe you bring in a coach for, uh, as an analyst, but, but Nick Saban is always recruiting. And when he goes into homes, what's he talk about? He talks about national championships and draft night. And Greeny, he will continue this for many more years to come. So, Mike T., the Saban effect, as, as one who has been there drafting players during this time, what does it mean? It means everything. Take you back a couple years ago, third round, we need a running back. We look at Kenyon Drake. And what's so important about the transition from college football to pro football from a running back perspective, and Dan, you know this well, can they pass protect? Yeah. We knew that Kenyon Drake was fast. We knew he was tough. And because he played for Coach Saban, we knew he knew what to do, that he was disciplined. And the fact that we could get a third-round running back that was also a good pass protector, all because he was coached under Nick Saban. What do you think, Danny? Yeah, I think the reality is the NFL, people trust the character of these young men because they come from Nick Saban's program. Because I think he's done the hardest thing in college football, and I think it's the hardest thing in the NFL. Get players to truly believe team over me. And I think that's the character of the Alabama program. Also, it's a program that is process over results. You are what you repeatedly do. And so NFL programs believe that Nick Saban has ingrained that into his players. That is, it is just an everyday process. And so many of them are already ready to go be pros. They understand what it's like because they've been pros for at least three or four of their past five years, so to speak, the three or last four years of their life, they've been pros on campus. And I think NFL programs look at the talent, talent and go, great, that's there. But the character makeup, the habits that they have, the process obsession rather than the results obsession that Alabama has, I think NFL organizations absolutely love. You know, and, and Paul, to come back to you, I remember you were on my podcast in the fall of 2018, and we were talking about, just to paraphrase, like, is it starting to come to an end? Are we starting to see a bit of a slip? And it, was, it felt like a reasonable conversation at the time. Why does it feel so totally different from that three years later? <laughs> it, it did feel reasonable, but, but here's what Nick Saban did. He, 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 re, he recalibrated. And I think bringing Sarkeesian in was one of the keys. Now, now Sarkeesian did not work out well at Atlanta uh, as, as the coordinator there, but he, he rejuvenated, rejuvenated his career. And, and Saban just is always looking for an edge. It, it used to be an insult, Greeny, to call a football program a football factory, but that's exactly what it is. It's like if you go into a, a, an Amazon plant or, or an Apple, it, it's as good as it gets anywhere in the country and that's why he is successful, and that's why players want to go there. They want to win championships. They want to hear their name called in the first round by you or somebody else, and they want to be successful. And, and, yeah. and, and I think Dan said the most important thing. It's all about the process. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the quarterback, the two receivers, the running back, the defensive tackle in the corner should all go in the first round. They have a bunch of offensive linemen that will probably go not long after that. It's going to be another one of those years. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.